Hello there guys, how are you all doing? My name is Rob of Rule of Two Review and welcome back. So today's conversation is very relevant and it even relates to a topic I discussed about a week ago following Nintendo's early Nintendo Direct on January 11th, 2018, which was like a week and a half or two weeks ago from today, the recording of this video. And on top of that conversation and what was happening, there was also a lot of activity on Twitter today specifically. A lot of folks, myself and some other people, got into a big conversation, a little bit of a debate, if you will, about this whole concept of ports from different consoles to new consoles, and if they're overpriced or underpriced, and if the content justifies these prices, and all of these different things, which we're going to discuss, at least as far as my opinion on this topic. And uh, it was actually a lot of fun, I gotta tell you guys, I had a lot of fun on Twitter today. It all started from a tweet from uh, my man Terminator Juice, who I definitely miss chatting with all the time. I used to do the Juices Loose podcast with him way back in the day. And uh, he made a tweet, and then OJ from Player Essence, somebody else you guys obviously know from an awesome channel, really good buddy of mine, and uh, he had some comments, and I had some comments, and the whole thing was surrounding the idea of whether or not Nintendo's recently announced Wii U ports for the Switch are justified in their full $60 price tag, and there was also a comparison made to Shadow of the Colossus, the remake, coming out in like two weeks, I think. It's like literally 10 days or two weeks away uh, for the PlayStation 4, which has a discount or a budget price of $40, and there was just this big comparison over which games cost this, which games cost that, how much content is in this game, how long is this game, and if these games are justifying the price, that they're being sold for. So like I said, I was kind of glad that this conversation happened today on Twitter because it got my brain thinking in a lot of different ways. A lot of us had a lot of interesting things to say back and forth and it was just really good and healthy to have this kind of discussion about something that's kind of back and forth that I think people could come down on a lot of different sides on this topic. So I just want to break down the individual titles, what's going on, what I think is happening, and if it really matters or if it's something that people should be upset about or if they shouldn't and basically what's happening. So, the gist is, as I just basically stated, Nintendo recently announced a couple of more Wii U ports coming over to the Nintendo Switch, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, we know Bayonetta's 1 and 2 are coming into a package, and of course Hyrule Warriors are the most recent examples of games coming to the Switch, and they are all, as far as we know, I believe this is official, they are all confirmed, or at least selling right now, for $59.99, 60 bucks basically, the typical brand new price for a brand new game, for any console. And again, this all started with the comparison to Shadow of the Colossus, which I'm very, very excited for because I've never played this game. Coming to the PlayStation 4 very soon, that game is being sold for only 40 bucks. And I gotta say, like, at the end of the day, when I look at the whole situation and everything happening with all of Nintendo's games and their ports, which are great games, all of them, and I'm very excited for, and then I look at what Sony's doing with Shadow of the Colossus, I have to say that honestly, Overall, the, the, the big picture, we'll get into the fine details in a minute, but the big picture, I definitely think that Nintendo's overcharging, I think, for these games. I, I think that there's a case to be made for Bayonetta, which we'll get into. But in general, I think that there's a little bit of, um, I think Nintendo is putting the Nintendo tax onto these games just a little bit, and they probably don't need to be full priced when you compare the fact that Hyrule Warriors is like 15 or 17 bucks right now, uh, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze is probably 10 or 15, I don't know the exact prices, but I've seen a lot of numbers thrown out there, so they're, they're, they're discounted, they're old games on the now dead Wii U, these games are cheap, same with the two Bayonetta games. Um, Shadow of the Colossus, of course, remaking like a 12 or 13 year old game, I think it's pretty cool that with the remake of that game comes a cheaper price of only 40 bucks. And then the big thing that I've kind of been hanging my hat on as far as why I think it's pretty cool to see what Sony's doing with Shadow of the Colossus is that they've remade that whole game. I mean, the games coming to the Switch from the Wii U, there are some improvements which I'll get into, but they're still essentially the same games with just some tweaks and added content, which is great, but that's all it is, whereas Sony literally redid and remade the entire Shadow of the Colossus game, and it looks fantastic, so good. I mean, that game was mind-blowing when it first came out in 2005 for the PlayStation 2, and it looks even better today, and to have put all of that work to remaking a game and the visuals and the engine, and selling that for a discounted price, kind of makes Nintendo's pricing look a little bunk. However, it's not all bad on the Nintendo front, and that's that's kind of one of the, the cool things to discuss here, and why it gets a little bit sticky, and why there really is 
no right or wrong answer here. It's all just whatever people feel comfortable with and how they want to justify these prices. But if we take a look at what's actually going on, we'll start with Hyrule Warriors because that's a unique case. There are two versions of that game that previously existed that are actually being pushed into the one game. There was the original Wii U release, an amazing game. You can see it right here. One of my favorite Wii U games and easily the game I played the most out of any game on that console. It's not my favorite, but I definitely put the most amount of time into it. And there was a lot of DLC for that game that eventually came out. There was a season pass and content for all the previous Zelda games. It was really cool. And then there was also the 3DS version of Hyrule Warriors that also had a lot of its own DLC and season pass content. And most of that was actually exclusive to the 3DS version or at least some of it, and you couldn't even play the exact same games or characters and maps in some cases on both versions. You literally needed both versions to play all the content. Now, what's really great about the Definitive Edition or whatever the perfect edition they're calling for the Switch of Hyrule Warriors is they're taking all the DLC from both games, Wii U and 3DS, and they're putting that into one major huge package I don't remember the character count, but it's like 28 or 35 or something insane. So many characters. We got Linkle coming. We got Toon Link, my man coming. I mean, and all the all the different maps and the weapons. There were so many weapons and so much loot that was thrown in with all the DLC as well. And they've put that all into this package. So I have to say that that's probably the game that justifies its full price the most because it's taking both games, all the content, and putting it into the one game. And there was already a lot of content in those games. So while it doesn't necessarily hold up exactly to the discounted price I think Sony is uh, paying for Shadow of the Colossus, I do think that it stands up on its own right. And Hyrule Warriors I think will be a fairly impressive package. You know, the big question with all of these games, not just Nintendo's game, not just Shadow, just with across the board, is is if they make sense for every gamer. And I think that every single person with all of these games, they get to decide, well, I played this game before and I'm still comfortable paying full price for this game again just because I want to, or I played this game before and it's absolutely not worth paying full price for it because I've already played it. It's a ripoff to pay 60 bucks. I mean, I think there's a, a debate on both sides. And that's kind of what's happening with Hyrule Warriors. I would say for anyone who's played the game before, it's tough to say whether or not it's worth it for you to buy it again. I mean, you've already played the game, so you know what you're getting. If you haven't played Hyrule Warriors, it's absolutely worth 60 bucks, I think, personally. I mean, that's probably the case for all of these games, but definitely for Hyrule Warriors. Now, the Bayonetta package is another one that's kind of in that gray area because there's really not a lot different that they're doing to that game. You can even see a list here of the things they're adding. It's like they're taking the offline mode and also making, or sorry, they're taking the online mode and also making it offline. Okay, that's fine. They're adding amiibo support, which is fine and cool in its own right. Nothing mind-blowing here. And then also video capture support because it's got the video capture feature on the Nintendo Switch. That isn't necessarily for the game itself. So those are the only major bullet points that I could find that shows the difference of what they're adding to Bayonetta 2. Nothing to Bayonetta 1, just to Bayonetta 2. So no major differences to the games. I mean, I personally, I know a lot of people get excited about the multiplayer and the online stuff, which is cool. I mean, it's great that that game had it, and it's really great to see that it's continuing in on and offline format on the Switch. That is super cool, and that adds a lot of replayability and longevity to that, to that game for people who care about it. I personally don't put a lot of stock into that because that's not what the Bayonetta games are about. That experience, while nice to have, isn't why you play a Bayonetta game. It's not why you buy Bayonetta 2. Bayonetta 1 doesn't even have this stuff, not even the remaster coming to the Switch. And so, while it's cool to have, and it is something to kind of put into the Bayonetta corner, doesn't make a big difference to me as far as price. And some people may feel differently and are really into that, and that's great. There you go you can help justify the purchase of the game in that respect. Um, other than that, I mean, these games are straight ports and they're being sold for full, for full price. The argument could be made that, hey, you are getting two games and you're also getting two freaking incredible games, so it's probably worth 60 bucks. That is fair, and it is true. Not only are both games fantastic, Bayonetta 2, in my opinion, is an absolute 10 out of 10, an amazing game, one of my top 10 favorite games of all time. For that reason, I will absolutely be double dipping. I have no problem telling you guys I will be buying the Bayonetta package for the Switch, even though I've owned the games previously. That's one I'm willing to say I'm going to buy at full price. But here's the thing. If you want to justify that and say, well, it's two games thrown into one for 60 bucks, well, yeah, but 
the same two games, I mean, literally the same two games, 95% the same package, was also $60 three years ago, four years ago, actually, 2014, when those games launched on the Wii U. And so now we're seeing the games not come down in price at all. Same two games were 60 bucks three years ago. Why wouldn't they be less than 60 bucks today if there's no significant changes? They haven't redone the assets. They haven't added new game, new new single player content. There aren't new missions. There aren't new characters or weapons and stuff to play, at least that we know of right now. And it's just the same two games. They were 60 bucks previously. They should probably be a little bit cheaper today, even if it was 49.99. Personally, I think. I mean, $39.99 would be great. Yeah, it's two games, so maybe a compromise at 50 bucks is the best example. Whatever the case. Um, I don't know that it feels as great to see these games being sold for 60 bucks without any significant changes. No graphical overhauls, no new content or missions, like I said. I feel like it's, even though I'm, I'm excited to buy it because I can afford it, it's probably a little bit too much. Now, as far as Switch ports go, let's get to the big one. This is probably the most egregious offender here and the one that most people have discussed when, you know, ex exhibiting how unhappy they are with what the Nintendo is doing with these games. And that is Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, an absolutely spectacular, freaking incredible game. Love it to death on my Wii U. I'm one of those weirdos that does prefer the Wii version, Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Wii. I like that game just a little bit more, but Tropical Freeze is still absolutely a masterpiece as far as 2D side-scrolling goes. Now this game is the one that is being sold for full $60. It originally launched at $50 on the Wii U, by the way, so it even launched at a, at a smaller price than it's launching on the Switch. And they've only done, they added like, I don't know, like a replay mode or something something strange. The big thing that they added was a Funky Kong mode. And basically it's an easy mode. It has a name of like beginner's tutorial mode or something. It's like beginner mode something. And that allows you to play the entire game in this beginner mode. And what that allows you to do is play as Funky Kong who makes the game vastly easy. Many people have made a comparison to the white Tanuki suit in the 3D, uh, 3D Land and 3D World Mario games that make you like invincible and you can't die or fail and you just get to breeze through the level. And yeah, that's I think a fair comparison. That seems to be what this Funky Kong mode is. And like, I love Funky Kong, you guys, don't get me wrong. I am stoked he's in the game. I wish there was more substance to him being added, just a different character to play as. Like, you're breaking barrels and you're getting Diddy Kong or Dixty Kong or Cranky Kong and throw Funky Kong in the mix. Instead, he represents an entire easy beginner's mode. That's what Funky Kong is. So, the only significant difference is that I don't think that's actually a significant difference. I don't think that improves the game or shows any major changes to the previous Wii U version. And not only is it be not is it being sold at full price, it's being sold at more than the price it originally launched for on the Wii U. So yeah, without question, despite the fact that the game is so, so good, it's overpriced. Nintendo is basically adding the Nintendo tax to all of these games to varying degrees. Obviously, I think Hyrule Warriors most justifies its price. Right below that, Bayonetta justifies it pri its price. And at the very bottom is Donkey Kong, which doesn't justify its price. I think that it's, it's being charged too much. And what I think Nintendo is doing with these games is they're like, hey, we've got a hit. Our first party games we know we're going to sell, so we're just going to we're going to take the money that we know we can get and charge full price. And honestly, honestly, Nintendo has put minimal effort into these 3 games. It doesn't mean that the games aren't still amazing because they are, and if you've never played either of these games, I absolutely demand that you pick them up and play some of them because they're all very good for different reasons. But Nintendo's, I think they're they're shooting for the stars here. I think that they're probably way overcharging for these three games. And so I'll bring it back to Shadow of the Colossus one more time, and the only reason these four games have been used as examples is because the conversation we were having on Twitter very much focused around these, and again, it's the direct comparison of Nintendo's Wii U ports, and specifically Shadow of the Colossus. And hey, I mean, I've already said it at the beginning of this video, Sony remastered and remade that entire game. It's a very old game, like I said, 13 years old, I believe, 2005, so 13 years old, and they remade the whole game, and they're selling that for 40 bucks. And so to me, that is the best example of how to do this because they, they, they took the time and money and resources to remaster the game, which means they probably could have more gotten away with charging full price because they put actual effort into remaking the game. It, I mean, the game has been redone from the ground up visually. 
That is impressive and very cool. Graphics don't justify making a game good or not or justify the money, but I think remastering a game's engine completely justifies manpower and money spent to do so. So I think Sony could have gotten away with charging more money, but instead they decided to both spend the money to remaster and then also charge a discounted price. So. I haven't even ever played Shadow of the Colossus, so I'm not going to talk about the game's quality. But if we look at the business models on display, the business model of Nintendo's games, and the business model of Sony's remaster of Shadow of the Colossus, I have to say that I think Sony is doing a better service here. They are absolutely providing an incredible value for a game that I know is, is very good. It was so many people have named it the best PS2 game of all time, the best Sony exclusive of all time, the best sixth gen game. I think IGN gave it literally the best game of the sixth generation. Don't quote me there, but I, th I think they did. And you know, um, you know, when talking on Twitter, there was a conversation about how short that game is and that there is way less content and way less things to do in that game. And that detracts from the value. That is a very valid point, and again, I haven't played the game, so I can't speak to it, but I have always heard that there, that, that is a short game. And so this is where people's different opinions come into play. Some people may say, hey, I don't mind, I'm not, I'm not worried about the content or the length, it's just about the quality of the game, or it's just about how much effort the company put into the game, and that's for some people. Other people might say the amount of content or the length of the game justifies the price, and they're both fair arguments, man. To me, that whole argument just comes down to the individual. As far as the way I see it, that's my personal opinion. So, I know the game is supposed to be short. Maybe that helped Sony make the decision to not sell it for 60 bucks, even though they remastered it. Maybe they were like, well, people are gonna go through this game in only six or seven hours, so we probably shouldn't charge 60 bucks because it's shorter. Maybe that's the case. And so it's hard to say, and again, as somebody who hasn't played Shadow of the Colossus, I can't give my opinion on that. I will only state that when we look at the business models, like I already said, I think Nintendo overall is overcharging, and I think Sony has is provided a pretty great value with a really awesome looking remaster of Shadow of the Colossus. So, I think that's most of what I had to say. I just wanted to get out the details, the uh, kind of continue the discussion that was had on Twitter today with some really awesome buddies and, and fellow YouTubers and stuff. It was a lot of fun. A lot of different people were chiming in. It was a crazy conversation. And, you know, OJ and I did a lot of going back and forth, and it was all very cordial, very friendly. We are just saying, hey, I feel this way, you feel that way, what about this, what about that? It was great. It was just a lot of fun. It actually had me energized, man. I was like, this is great, this is a fun conversation. Like, you know, this makes sense, and that doesn't make sense, and, and you know, and it got me thinking, and I thought this was an interesting thing to talk about, because there's a lot happening, especially on the Switch with the port thing. I have discussed it a couple of weeks ago, like I said, a lot of ports coming to the Switch, a lot of Nintendo Wii U games coming to the Switch. And so I thought it would be fun to discuss. So what do you guys think about this? Do you think Nintendo's model makes sense or is it overcharged? And how do you think that compares to what Sony is doing with Shadow of the Colossus? What's your opinion on that game and on Sony's remaster and their price of that remaster? You've heard me say what I think. I think Nintendo's overcharging. I think Sony's got a great value, but hey, I'm gonna be buying the Bayonetta package and I'm going to be buying Shadow of the Colossus. So hey, I'm giving my money to both companies for different reasons and I am totally cool with that. That's how I'm going to spend my money. What are you planning to do and what do you think about this whole crazy thing? Definitely discuss it below. Thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Rule of Two Review, and I will catch you next time on another video.